Good morning, I'm Deirdre Fitzpatrick. And I'm Teo Torres. So Lodi native Dirk Verdorn, our Lodi. meteorologist, yeah. he is, joins us now. And that's part of your childhood growing it up. It really was. Uh, and uh, boy, I mean, again, over 40 years uh, we went. I mean, as soon as we moved to Lodi, we were going there. That's what you're doing. It was just, yeah, it was, it was that's fun. That's fun, good memories. Yeah. And I don't know if they still do this, but we used to go in on Fridays before 5 o'clock and you could get in free. Oh. I was looking it up on the, I don't know if they still do that, though. Uh, you're dangling a carrot, Dirk. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it to go. So here we are, taking a live look. West Sacramento, of course, Sutter Health Park, Sky Camera. If we had the outfield shot, we'd show the flags aren't really moving all that much right now. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at current temperatures. 59 degrees in Fairfield, Sacramento 59, 65 in Yuba City, 62 in Stockton, 61 Modesto, 63 in Auburn, and 41 degrees. Current temperature at Lake Tahoe. Your Valley Planner. They expect to have lots of sunshine again this afternoon with temperatures warming into the mid 90s. Eventually by three o'clock, we'll be at 92. We should see temperatures peaking around 94, 95 degrees. I think Sacramento, we have a forecast high of 95 degrees. So that's what we're shooting for. Foothill Planner temperatures in the upper 80s. Uh, places like Auburn, you should get up to about 88 degrees, 86 in uh, Placerville. But as you can see, we are looking at plenty of sunshine, not only in the foothills, but also through the Sierra. By nine o'clock, a temperature of 55 degrees. And as we go through the afternoon, temperatures eventually make their way to the mid 70s with a forecast high at Lake Tahoe of about 76 degrees. So that's a rundown of what you can expect around the area today. But what's going on with the roadways this morning? For that, we need to turn it over to Brian Hickey. Pedal to the metal, Dirk. We got no delays here on uh, Highway 50 this morning as you're coming in from Folsom into downtown. Interstate 80 looking good through the uh, Cap City Freeway and across the top. No issues there at I-5 and 99 all looking good. So you can travel at the speed limit. Across the causeway looking good there. 5 and 99 stocked and no issues and highway 4. We're seeing a little bit of slowing right as you get over into the Antioch and Pittsburgh area. Usual delays there, but it is starting to build there. So a little extra time on that route. No uh, issues to report, no incidents anyway. And then westbound 205. Watch for the brake lights right around 11th Street where it comes in. That's going to be a 30 minute ride across the top of the Tracy Triangle. Westbound 580, 29 minutes as you make your way down into Dublin. Here in the Sacramento area, it's a 10 minute ride from Rancho Cordova to 99 on Highway 50. Interstate 80, Roosevelt to split nine minutes and five and 99. You choose 11 minute ride into downtown. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you, Brian. New this morning, a nation leading climate action bill heads to the governor's desk today. It is requiring action from some of the largest corporations, not just in our state, but actually the world. Case here three is Aaron Half joining us now live at the state capitol with details. Yeah, this one of a kind legislation has passed and is now headed across Governor Newsom's desk, and this would require some of the largest businesses, not just in California, but the world to really have transparency for their greenhouse gas admission, but they really don't stop there. The requirement also stretches to climate risks to their bottom lines. Ultimately, the two bills headed to the governor's desk requires large businesses in California making over a billion in gross annual revenue to disclose their greenhouse gas emissions for their assets, products and supply chains, while also requiring public and private businesses, including banks and hedge funds, to publicly disclose the financial financial risk to their companies imposed by climate change. This is something the EU, UK, Japan and Canada are already doing. Our colleagues, we have growing support from this bill uh, in the business community, including major corporations like Levi's and Amalgamated Bank and Google and Apple and Salesforce and Microsoft and a huge coalition of major apparel uh, brands. Uh, this is an idea whose time has come. 30% uh, of S&P 500 companies are already doing this. It's time to level the playing field and have transparency. These bills seen as an opportunity for better transparency across the board. From the California State Capitol, Aaron Heft, KCRA 3 News. Aaron, thank you. A Modesto man in the meantime has been convicted in the deaths of two men more than 10 years ago. David Farrell was found guilty in the deaths of Christopher Diaz and Mark Ochoa. This was the scene on Maxine Drive in August of 2009. Police say that Farrell and other gang members shot those victims. A short time later, Farrell and his accomplices led police on a pursuit with suspects firing shots at officers. No officers were injured. The shooting, as I said, was believed to be gang related. Well, police in Utah have arrested a suspected a man uh, for rape in Modesto. Ivan Romo was taken into custody yesterday in the Greater Salt Lake area. He's accused of raping several victims. All of Romo's alleged victims were prostitutes, so investigators fear there could be more. Anybody who has information in this case, please call Modesto police. 
Well, Davis police conducting an investigation into child pornography. They have arrested a man, though, for a different crime. Police say they were serving a search warrant at a home on 3rd Street near I Street when they discovered what they are calling an assault shotgun. Here's a better look at that weapon. In addition to the assault shotgun, they also found evidence connected to the original case. Ever Tanapadia was arrested and booked on charges of a firearm violation. Well, this morning we're on the verge of a strike against the big three automakers. Late tonight, more than 100,000 could hit the picket line. Mike Cherry is joining us now with more on the impasse and also what the White House is doing. President Biden spoke with the head of United Auto Workers and the leaders of the big three recently, encouraging all parties to continue negotiations. And with the deadline at nine tonight, talks are ongoing. But the UAW president said last night the union is ready to strike as the latest offers from Ford, General Motors and Stellantis, which makes Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, Alfa, Romeo, Fiat and Maserati do not meet their demands. The big three say they're trying to balance rising labor costs with the expense of upgrading their facilities as the market transitions from fossil fuels to electric. Analysts predict that a strike could quickly cost the economy billions of dollars as inflation data shows new and used car prices are just starting to come down from their pandemic era highs. We are asked by the president to track any development in the domestic and global economy uh, that's going to have an impact or that might have an impact. And, you know, there's a long list of things that uh, 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 fit that description. Uh, so we're, we're tracking this carefully. So if no agreement is reached, the strike would start at a limited number of each company's plants, but the possibility remains that all 146,000 members could walk off the job tomorrow. This would be the first time that that has happened. Deirdre. All right, so Mike, how far apart at this point do we think these two sides are? Yeah, so the union wants a 46% raise over the next four years and 40 hours of pay for 32 hours of work, ending some of those wage tiers and bringing back a pension system among some other benefits uh, changes as well. Now on changes to pay, the union says each company has offered less than half of their requests and the companies want to cut annual profit sharing checks that are often more than $10,000 and not raise pay for retirees. Teo. All right, thank you. Meantime, fall TV season starting without many of your favorite shows. Unions representing the screen actors and actors remain far apart from the big studios. And now there's concern that this 2024 will be impacted as well. If there's not resolution in September, you are seeing this seep into 2024 in a major way. 2023 is already a mulligan like the year is over we're going to get what's been taped and and out there but there's no hope for scripted starting at the top of next year if this resolution doesn't happen immediately well coming up this morning on today uh we'll hear more from mikey o'connell of the hollywood reporter on the strike's impact NBC, though, well positioned for the strike this fall due to unscripted show The Voice taking up four hours of programming on Mondays and Tuesdays, Dateline moving to Thursdays, as well as Friday's Big Ten football on Saturdays and the NFL on Sundays. New shows The Irrational and Found have already been completed, along with returning shows Quantum Leap, Magnum P.I., Transplant and Game Show The Wall. So that just leaves one hour of Law and Order repeats and one hour of Chicago drama repeats. It's pretty interesting. Isn't it, it? it really is when yeah. you break it all down like that. By the way, the new season starts a week from Monday. The biggest impact you'll miss right now will be the late night shows and Saturday Night Live. It is a San Joaquin County tradition. It goes back more than 80 years and it all gets started once again today. Case Arthes, Melanie Wingo's live in Lodi this morning as preparations get underway for the very important grape festival. Good morning. Good morning, and I'm so excited to hear the history that Dirk knows about this festival. I heard you talking about it at the top of the hour, and we are now on the festival grounds. So, Dirk, are you Lodi, jealous? I don't know. I will report back with all the good stuff. Um, so you know that the festival is about to get underway. We just saw them roll in the porta potties, and also you can see there's food 
they're a little bit farther away. So, you know, they, they have a good distance between the porta potties and the food. There are rides out here at the festival grounds as well. This is a tradition here in Lodi and in San Joaquin County dating back decades. And we want to show you some video of how things look when the grounds are fully up and running for the day. This is video from last year's event. This festival is one of the biggest in San Joaquin County. And over the next four days, the community will come together to celebrate all things related to the grape harvest and agriculture as a whole. You can expect fair food and fun, carnival rides, exhibits, concerts each night. And the organizers tell KCRA3 they're really looking forward to people coming back for this year's festival. We celebrate you know, all the fruits uh, and riches of riches of our area, which is not only, you know, the grapes, but we also have fruits and vegetables and 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 all of that. But the yeah, economic impact that the grape vessel has on our community is huge. So the Lodi Grape Festival and Harvest Fair is open for the next four days and to get all the ticket and pricing information as well as ours go to grapefestival.com and coming up in our next half hour i've been told that through these doors there's just a ton of grapes and they're going to open this up for us and we're going to go in and see some of the grapes so Dirk, are you ready for that? Deirdre Teo, <laughs> they're going to go in with us, right? Oh my, we I would go love to else. go, yeah. I think no, it'd be great. I'm, I'm down. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Roll out the red carpet. Thank you, Melanie. You need a red carpet? Yes. I'm going to the Great Festival. <laughs> and if Dirk comes, Purple it's carpet. Well, you I go. mean, yeah. Native yeah. Sun, 612, yeah. gates at the Great Festival, red carpet or not, will open today.